in this video, I will be proving that the Mandela effect is false. First, I just want to say I have a terrible memory, okay? I couldn't rely on my memory to save my life. Who else can admit that they have bad memories? Who else can admit someone might have been taught the scripture by someone who doesn't have a good memory? Or misunderstood or misheard the scriptures? Or misremembers reading it? Is that a possibility? That's all I'm saying. Is it possible? Or is it more likely than some crazy machine altering our reality? What's more likely? Me having a not so good memory on what I've been taught? Or I might have possibly been taught the wrong thing. Or is it more possible that some by some science fiction thing, this machine can alter our reality and change the Word of God? The God who is supposed to be able to hold His Word and preserve it for all eternity. What makes more sense? A machine's more powerful than God? Or God is more powerful than a machine? Now, I might be speaking to some people out there who don't believe in God, and that's okay. But I'm trying to speak to the Christians who believe in Man the Mandela Effect. My brother, he came up and he told me, he started talking to me about the Mandela Effect, and at first it seems kind of convincing. They have a few questions they walk you through, and I'm not going to go into all of them because you've all heard them. And at first you're like, wow, this might have some validity. But then when it started coming to the Word of God, that it changed the Word of God, it made me realize this has to be false. Because God's Word is preserved by His own hand. And there ain't nobody who can change that. Okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. People have been taught that the lion shall lay down with the lamb. I thought that myself. But it is a misremembering of the actual verse. I remember reading that verse some odd years ago and thought, wow, I've heard it said wrong all along. It also has been taught that animals went into the ark two by two. Therefore, there was only two of every kind of animal on the ark. But that's a misteaching as well. There's actually seven clean animals of every kind and only two of the unclean. I remember reading both these scriptures as I was going through the whole Bible. This was before the Mandela Effect was ever even a thing. And I remember thinking, man, I've just had it been taught to me wrong all these years. In Sunday schools, they teach the kids two by two on the ark. That's how it is. But that's not what's actually in the Bible. It was only the unclean. Okay? And it's not actually... I'll go ahead and read the other scriptures here in a minute. But let's go to Mark 2.22. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined, but new wine must be put into new wineskins. Now, I was watching a pastor actually saying he believed in the Mandela Effect. And he was reading from the King James Version. He said, oh, look, the Bible's been changed. The Word of God's been changed. It don't say wineskins anymore. It says a bottle. Okay? Maybe you just misread it. Maybe you started reading the New King James Version. Because it does say, still to this day, wineskins in the New King James Version. But in the King James Version, it says bottles. Okay? Now, was it really wineskins or was it bottles? I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying if it was to change it, it should have changed it into the New King James Version as well to bottles. But no, it's still there. God's Word is still preserved. You just might have misremembered it. Okay? Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Okay? So, he says, well, what about the... I thought it was supposed to be forgive us our trespasses. It says debts there. That was another verse that I read. I was like, wow, I've been taught ever since I was a kid. Forgive us our trespasses in the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Well, where do we even get that from? Well, let's go to verse 14. Okay? We just read verse 12. Let's go to Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? So we understand that the debts is actually trespasses. So our parents 
to make it more understandable, probably substitute debts for trespasses. That's not that big of a deal to me. Did some crazy machine change the Word of God? Nope. God holds it in His hand. There ain't nothing that can touch it. The devil can't touch it. I can't touch it. You can't touch it. All the editors and publishers in the world can't touch it. Nobody can, especially some crazy machine that's supposed to alter our reality and change the little things subtle. Just little minute things that don't even matter. Does that make any sense? Or does that sound like a movie that tr they're trying to put out? Sounds like a, a good science fiction movie, but not reality. We are living in the real world, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what you've been hearing or how convincing it sounds. Anybody can be deceived. Anybody can be tricked. Anybody can say they remember something, but they really don't. They have a bad memory. They misunderstand. They forgot. Okay? That's more likely. Isaiah 11.6 The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. So this is where they get the verse that says the lion shall lay down with the lamb. Okay? But that's just a misremembering or a misteaching of what the actual scripture says. Like I said, I came across this scripture probably uh, 06, I want to say. And I didn't hear about the Mandela effect until this year. I don't know how long it's been out. But I can tell you, the word of God is preserved. Psalm 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. God preserves His own word. Okay? If you believe in God, that should mean something to you. That should mean, well... I guess this Mandela effect was pretty convincing, but it's wrong. It's not right. Psalm 119, 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God has already settled his word in heaven. There's nothing that can change it. He won't even change it himself. He's not going to say, well, I don't like that word anymore. I'm going to change it out a little bit. He's not even going to do it. It's settled in heaven forever. Isaiah 48. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The last scripture, Matthew 5.18, For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Basically, that's a jot and a tittle is basically like a period, a comma, you know, all those little accent marks that we use in English. That jot and tittle is like the same thing in Hebrew or in Greek. However, whatever version he's talking about here, he's meaning every little thing is going to come to pass. So that should mean something to you, Christian. If you're out there and you're confused and you even hear other pastors say that this Mandela effect is scary and it seems like it's real, don't believe it. Don't believe it. There's a lot of false truths going around. The Bible even says if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. Now, this was talking about something different. But I want to tell you, it could also apply to other things. Because I've heard about the flat earth issue. That's wrong as well. They're throwing all these crazy things out there to get us chasing down these rabbit trails that lead nowhere, that don't even matter in the grand scheme of things. You know what matters? What matters is saving people's souls. It's being used. Letting God use you to save people's souls. That's our mission, Christians. Don't get caught up on the Mandela effect. Don't get caught up on the flat earth theory. Don't get caught up on, oh, Jesus is in the desert. Let's go see him. Jesus is in Houston, Texas. Let's go see him. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Don't believe it. Read your Bibles for yourself. Get in the Word and then learn. See how I'm supposed to save people and then do it. In the name of Jesus, do that. This will be the last and only video I'm going to make on this subject because I think it's laughable. I think it's stupid. And I think it's leading people astray. But I wanted to prove that this is not true. When you start saying that this word of God is being changed, that fires me up. Fires me up with a righteous anger. And I hope it fires you up too. 
No, God's word is preserved. He does it himself. Don't let nobody try to tell you any different. I hope this has helped you out, Christian out there, maybe even atheist. Maybe you'll start believing in God. I hope you do. But I hope this truth has reached your heart. And I hope you accept it. I love you and I thank you for watching. In Jesus' holy name.